A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis brought to you by Shankar Ice Academy. Today we will be covering the Hindi News edition dated 9th of September 2022. These are the articles that we will be analyzing today. Let's move on to the first news article discussion. So today we are going to start our discussion with this op-ed article. It provides us excerpts from the interview with two experts in the field of education. They have talked about the necessity of mother tongue of a child being made the medium of education in schools. They have also talked about why English should be taught as a second language in Indian schools and not as the first language. So to understand the views of the experts we'll see what is meant by medium of instruction then we'll also see the national educational policy and its stand on this and finally we'll see the author's views okay and this is the syllabus that you can link with this discussion let me start with explaining what do i mean by medium of instruction see it is the language which is used by the teacher to teach teaching the language or any educational content through the target language increases the amount of exposure which the learner gets it also increases the opportunities of the learner to communicate in that same language and to develop a control over that language so for example take our news analysis itself i am teaching in english why we have chosen english because in upsc prelims examination only two languages are used either english or hindi Now since majority of students in India have exposure to English we are using this medium of instruction okay now the same applies to schools also now many say that the medium of instruction in schools should be made English but the educationalists they say the mother tongue of the child should be made the medium of instruction in schools so these are the two broad opinions now let us see what the NEP National Educational Policy says about this. As per the National Educational Policy of 2020, wherever possible, the medium of instruction should be in the mother tongue. This is especially from the start of schooling until at least grade five, that is fifth class, and preferably till grade eight and beyond also. So NEP also prefers mother tongue to be used as the medium of instruction even till grade eight and beyond. and it also says that thereafter the home language shall continue to be taught as the language wherever possible and as per nep this instruction is to be applicable for both public schools and private schools now why nep advocates this that is why mother tongue should be made the medium of instruction this is mainly because young children they learn and grasp difficult concepts more quickly and easily in their mother tongue rather than english Now if we talk about the schools where students mother tongue is different from the medium of instruction here the NEP proposes to encourage the teachers to use bilingual approach while interacting with such students NEP also says that a language does not need to be the medium of instruction for it to be taught and learned well that is if you want to learn a language it need not be the medium of instruction so through this we can see that nep challenges the popular notion which says to gain expertise in a particular language it should be made as the medium of instruction so from this it is clear that even if english is not used as the medium of instruction we can learn it well and it can be taught well apart from all these other than schools also nep proposes to have regional languages to be used in engineering colleges and medical courses This is mainly aimed to promote inclusion of marginalized communities in attaining high quality technical education. So we can understand with respect to mother tongue as a medium of instruction NEP gives a go. But what the data says? See to make any policy change it should be duly supported by data. Now to have the data about the medium of instruction in schools across India I have taken the Unified District Information System for Education Report 2019 to 20. See this report covers about 26.5 crore children from primary to senior secondary level in over 15 lakh schools across India 
And in this report, it has been found that nearly a quarter of school students, that is 25 percentage of school students in India, have English as the medium of instruction. And the remaining schools have either Hindi as their medium of instruction or their regional languages. Okay. So as per the 2019-20 report, only 25 percentage of schools in India use English as the medium of instruction. And if you take the state-wise data, it can be found that most of the students with English medium education are from the states of Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, and the southern states. So this is the situation in India. Now, what about the rest of the world? Because English is not the mother tongue of whole world, right? So to know this situation, let us now look at the other successful educational models in Asia as an example, so that we can have a comparative understanding. Let me take the example of Singapore first. See, Singapore gained complete independence from British in 1959. Here, you should remember that Singapore is a city-state and it contains diverse ethnic population. So, it has a considerable population of Chinese people, Malay people, Javanese people, and also the Tamils. So, keeping this in mind, Singapore's then Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew in 1959 introduced the bilingual policy of school education throughout Singapore. This policy advocated English medium education with another language. Here, this another language should be the mother tongue of the child. So, this educational policy combined with the free trade economy and globalization of Singapore led to its high economic growth. So, we can see that the bilingual policy of Singapore was a success. Now, let me take the example from other end. So, if you look at the educational models of some East Asian nations, for example, China and Japan, they have retained their main language as the medium of instruction in schools up until now. China has retained Mandarin and Japan has retained Japanese. So, that means if we consider the economic growth of a country to determine the standard of school education, then we can say that both China and Japan has the best education systems in the world, even though English language is not used as a medium of instruction in their schools. So, these two countries uses a single language, that is their own mother tongue, as the medium of instruction. So, we have looked at two different kinds of examples and we can see that both the models have performed well irrespective of their differences. So that is why the Indian educationalists, they are still unable to fix on which should be the educational model for India. Now let us look at the opinion of the experts as per the open article. See, the experts seem to be on the same page on the question of medium of instruction in Indian schools. They have advocated mother tongue of the child to be used as the learning medium in the initial years of school education of the child. So, they want mother tongue to be used as the medium of instruction, at least in the initial years of school education. Second, they are of the view that English should be taught as a second language and not as a medium of learning of every other subjects. This is based on the fact that there is a tendency for us to think in one's mother tongue. So, English-based learning mediums cause harm to thinking capabilities of large sections of the population whose mother tongue is different. And that is why the experts suggest that English should just be a second language and not the medium of instruction or medium of learning. See, if you see, popularly there is a view that students who have uh, had their education in their mother tongue, they will find the transition to English in higher education difficult. This is the popular opinion. But the experts counter this argument by saying that this transition has been done all over the world and that too without much difficulty. It has happened in major non-English speaking nations of the world very easily. But the fact to be remembered is, in such countries also, the student should have learned English at least as a language, then only they can make the transition easier. So, these are the important opinions of the experts regarding the medium of learning or medium of instruction in Indian schools. Basically, they want mother tongue as the medium of instruction and if not possible till the second education, at least in the initial years of school, they are recommending this. And the second recommendation is to use English as a second language only. So, in this discussion, I have given you two different views and two different models of education system that exists around the world. Now, this will give you an opportunity to decide on your own as to which model is best. Don't forget to comment your opinion on this matter. So, that's all. In this discussion, we saw about the medium of learning or the medium of instruction 
and the NEPs stand on this matter. We also saw about the successful educational models in Asia and finally the author's view in this matter. With these viewpoints in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. So our next discussion is going to be based on this news article. Yes, it talks about the Human Development Index. So recently, the 2021 index was released and as per this index, India's ranking has dropped. So before knowing about India's position and the reasons behind it, let us know about the Human Development Index in brief. See, this index is released by United Nations Development Program, UNDP. But note that it is not released as a separate index. Rather, it is released as part of the Human Development Report. Actually, this Human Development Report releases five composite indices every year. They are the Human Development Index, then the Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, then the Gender Development Index, Gender Inequality Index, and then Multidimensional Poverty Index. But today, our focus is going to be only on Human Development Index, HDI. Maybe in the coming days, we will be discussing about the other indices. See, this HDI was created to emphasize that people and their capabilities should be the ultimate criteria for assessing the development of a country and only just economic growth should not be taken as a consideration. So, as a result of this, HDI was created and it has been created as a summary measure of average achievement in key dimensions of human development. These key dimensions are a long and healthy life, then being knowledgeable and having a decent standard of living. See here, the health dimension is assessed by life expectancy at birth and then the educational dimension is measured by two factors. One factor is the mean of years of schooling for adults who are aged 25 years and more. And second is the expected years of schooling for children who are of school entering age. So this was the second dimension. Now the third dimension is the standard of living dimension. It is measured by the gross national income per capita. Okay. So here the dimensions are long and healthy life, then knowledge, then a decent standard of living. And the indicators are life expectancy at birth, then expected years of schooling, and then mean years of schooling, and then gross national income per capita. Okay. I have just given the definitions of these here. If you want to know about this, you can just go through it. Now, based on the performance in each of these indicators and dimensions, scores are given. Now, when the score is 0 0.550 or less than that, then we say that country has low human development. If the score is between 0 0.550 to 0 0.699, then that country has medium human development. Then for a country to be termed as having high human development, it should have a score between 0 0.7 to 0 0.799. And when a country has 0 0.8 or greater score, then that country has very high human development. So based on this basic knowledge, let us come to the 2021 results. But before that, I'm going to tell you where this HDI can be used. So it can be used to question the national policy choices. For example, you can ask how two countries with the same level of uh, gross national income per capita can end up with different human development outcomes. So such kinds of debates can be triggered by human development index. So even though you can question the human development aspects, you should remember that HDI does not reflect on inequalities, poverty, human security, empowerment, etc. of a country. To provide data and status on these issues, we have other composite indices, which we saw in the beginning. Okay, now let us come to the 2021 findings. Globally, if you see, first finding is for the first time ever, the Global Human Development Index value has declined that to for the two years straight. And this is mainly due to the pandemic. But apart from pandemic also, the war in Ukraine and the environmental challenges have also contributed to this lower human development index. And it was also found that 90% of countries saw their HDA value drop in either 2020 or 2021. Here you can see the number of countries having lower HDA value is very high compared to the other years. Now, based on these global data, the report concludes that human development globally has stalled for the first time in 32 years. Okay, so human development is not happening anywhere to the expected levels. Now, if you take India, India has ranked 132 out of 191. 
Now, if you compare it with the previous indices, it has fallen two places. We were in the 130th position in 2020 index. Okay. Now, India's score is 0 0.633. So, that means where we are in the category, we are in the medium human development category. But this score is lower than what was in 2018. See, even though this decline is in line with the global trend, we should also acknowledge that the reduction in India's score is mainly due to the fall in life expectancy at birth. This has reduced India's overall score. Here I have given the life expectancy at birth in India was 70.7 years before and now it is only 67.2 years. Here you can see the uh, India's position in other indicators also. For example, India's expected years of schooling stands at 11.9 years and India's mean years of schooling is at 6.7 years. And the gross national income per capita level is $6,590 for India. And now if you compare India with our neighboring countries, here you can see I have given the comparison with Pakistan and Sri Lanka. From this data itself, we can find that Sri Lanka has always been above the world average. Whereas India, if you see, after 2018, there is a decline. So these are the few points that you have to know regarding human development as per the Human Development Index of UNDP. With these points in mind, now let us move on to the next discussion. Our next discussion is going to be based on this news article. It says that our president is going to launch the TB elimination program in Delhi today. See, as you know, tuberculosis is caused by bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis. It most often affects the lungs. And this disease spreads from one person to another person through the air. So it is a communicable disease. See, when people who have TB, when they cough, sneeze or spit, they propel the TB germs into the air. And if a person inhales this air which is infected with TB bacteria, then that person will be affected with TB. But note that this particular communicable disease can be cured if the affected person is provided with necessary medical care. But TB was a menace in India. So to eradicate it, an elimination program was framed in India. This is called as the National Strategic Plan for Tuberculosis Elimination. It was launched in the year 2017 and this has a target to eliminate TB by 2025. So the goal of this plan is to achieve a rapid decline in tuberculosis mortality. At the same time, it will also work towards elimination of TB in India by the year 2025. But here you should remember that the SDG goal to end TB is by 2030, whereas India's goal is to end five years prior to that itself. Now, in the news article, we said that a president is going to launch a new initiative. It is called the Ni Shai Mitra Initiative 2.0. See, in Hindi, Shai means tuberculosis. So, this initiative aims to eliminate tuberculosis. And this portal will be an online platform for donors to provide various forms of support to those who are undergoing TB treatment. See, under this platform, three-pronged support can be given, which includes nutritional support, diagnostic support, and vocational support. And the donors in this portal will be called Nikshai Mitras. So anyone could be a donor. It could be an elected representative. It could be corporates, NGOs, individuals. Anyone can be a donor in this portal. So that means anyone who is suffering from TB in India can register their details in this portal and they can ask for help. So by doing this, we are on the right path to eliminate tuberculosis in our country. Okay, that is all about this initiative and tuberculosis. Now let's move on to the next discussion. How can we finish our analysis today without talking about Queen Elizabeth II? I have taken all these news articles today which talks about major events in her reign. Why we are talking about her? Because yesterday, Britain's longest reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, died at the age of 96. And especially Indians, we have a special connection to her because she was the first British monarch to accede to the throne after India's independence. So it becomes important for us to know a few facts about Queen Elizabeth II. See, she was the elder daughter of Prince Albert. Prince Albert was the Duke of York at that time. See, whenever we mention the term Duke in royal families, it means the member of nobility that ranks just below the monarch. They usually rule a duchy, which might be a country, territory or domain. 
So in simple words, we can say that a duke is a person who belongs to the royal family and by acquiring this title of duke, they become sovereign ruler of a small state or a small territory or domain. And as I said, remember their rank is just below the monarch. So usually men of the royal family get a new title when they marry and often they take the duke status. You also know the female equivalent of duke which is duchess. So Prince Albert was the Duke of York at that time and he had a little chance of ascending the throne because he was the youngest son of King George V. But later the elder brother of Prince Albert who was supposed to be the next king, he abdicated his throne. Abdicated means he renounced his throne. So that is why Prince Albert who was the father of Elizabeth and who was the last in line for kingship, he became the King George VI. And when he became the King George VI, Elizabeth became their heir presumptive. Here you should know about two terms, heir apparent and heir presumptive. An heir apparent is a person who is first in an order of succession and that person cannot be replaced from inheriting by the birth of another person. But on the other hand, a person who is first in the order of succession but can be replaced by the birth of a more eligible heir is known as heir presumptive. So Elizabeth became heir presumptive because she had no brothers. Okay, so after her father became King George VI, she was the heiress presumptive. And later in 1947, Elizabeth got married and her husband, Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten, was given the title of Duke of Edinburgh. But very shortly after her marriage, King George VI, that is uh, her father, died in 1952. So subsequently, as she was the heir apparent, she became the queen. Her coronation was held at Westminster Abbey in 1953. You should note that at that time Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister of UK. So that means from 1952 or 1953 to 2022, for almost 70 years, Queen Elizabeth II has ruled over United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. See, you know that Commonwealth, this is also called as the Commonwealth of Nations, is a free association of sovereign states and it comprises of United Kingdom and many of its former dependencies. These are the states which acknowledge that the British monarch is the symbolic head of their association. So that is why the Queen Elizabeth II was the head of Commonwealth also. But here should note that in 2015 only, Queen Elizabeth II became the UK's longest serving monarch. Before that, Queen Victoria held that record. She ruled from 1837 to 1901. So if you talk about the rule of Queen Elizabeth II, some commentators describe her reign as a golden age. Here also remember that the first child of Queen Elizabeth II is Prince Charles. So he will be the next king of United Kingdom. And formally, Prince Charles will be called as King Charles III. And don't forget that only few days before, she appointed the 15th Prime Minister of UK, Ms. Listras. Now, if you talk about Queen Elizabeth II's relation with India, it is often termed as romantic. Because she cherished the warmth and hospitality from Indians whenever she visited India. She actually visited thrice in her course of reign. Once in 1961, then in 1983 and then in 1997. Here, 1961 visit was most crucial because it was the 15 years of India's independence. At that time, she was the guest of honor at the Republic Day Parade at the invitation of the then President of India, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. So by doing so, India signaled the quality of their relations with the United Kingdom. So that is why this 1961 visit was important for India. Actually, even her last visit was important for us because her final visit marked the 50th anniversary celebrations of India's independence. At that time, she even made a reference to Jalanwala Bagh massacre. Okay, so these are a few of the points that you have to know about Queen Elizabeth II. Now the reign of United Kingdom will be taken over by Prince Charles, who will be called as King Charles III after his coronation. So with these points in mind, we are moving to the next session, which is the practice questions discussion session. Now this is the first question. Which of the following statements is incorrect with reference to Human Development Index 2021? Four options are given. First option, it measures the life expectancy at birth and gross national income per capita. These two are indicators of HDI. 
if there would have been only in this sentence then this sentence would have been wrong but this sentence is correct now come to the second statement india is in the high human development category along with sri lanka and pakistan this statement is incorrect because india has a score of about 0.633 and we saw that when the score is between 0.550 and 0.699 then that country will be called as having medium human development so we are in the medium human development category we can say sri lanka is in the high human development category but pakistan's score is even lower than us okay so b is incorrect now c the global hda value has declined for the two consecutive years this statement is also correct option d mentions as all of the above now all of the above statements is not incorrect okay so be careful while marking the correct answer as the question asks you to choose the incorrect statements so the correct answer is option b now this next question is based on tuberculosis you have to choose the correct statements first statement is it is an airborne disease everyone knows this tuberculosis is an airborne disease so first statement is correct because it spreads through air statement 2 India does not have any specific vaccine program for TB. This statement is incorrect because we have a specific vaccine called BCG which is for TB and this is specially given to children in India. So statement 2 is incorrect. Now you have to remove two from the given options. You can remove options B and C. Come to the third statement. There is no drug resistant TB. This is actually incorrect because see we know that TB is curable. and for that anti tb medicines are used now these anti tb medicines are called as first line drugs that means it is the first choice for treating a particular condition and some of the medications that are used as first line drugs in tuberculosis include isoniazid rifampin etambutal etc but it is to be noted that some of the bacteria strains of tb has become resistant to one or more medicines now this drug resistance emerges when the anti tb medicines are used inappropriately or when it is overused or abused now this resistance has given rise to two type of drug resistant tb one is the multi drug resistant tuberculosis in short mdr tb now this is a form of tb that is caused by bacteria which do not respond to first line drugs so mdr tb is treatable and curable by using second line drugs only and these are the second line drugs but in some cases more severe drug resistance can develop now this is the second type of drug resistant tb it is called as extensively drug resistant tb in short xdr tb now this is a more serious form of mdr tb and this is caused by bacteria that do not respond to even the most effective second line anti tb drugs also so that means xdr tb patients can be cured but with the current available drugs the likelihood of success is much smaller compared to the patients having ordinary tb or mdr tb okay so there are two drug resistant tbs mdr tb and xdr tb that is why statement 3 is incorrect so from the given options you can easily say the correct answer is option a one only Now this is the mains question for you today. Interested aspirants can write the answer to this question and post it in the comment section. Now quiz question for today will be posted as a poll. You can attend there. With this, we have come to the end of Hindi news analysis for the date 9th of September 2022. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and also subscribe to Shankar Ayes Academy YouTube channel for regular updates regarding civil services preparation. Thank you.